this demo will be a little bit easier here since I'm set up for a gig. So I'm going to show you really quickly what this thing does. So the whole point is the signal path for the for this guy, which is a Roland Hansonic HPD 20, uh, goes in to the um, everything comes into this uh, junction box, and the right side goes directly to the RC 500, and then the RC 500 goes over to this. Um, mixer so it, the two signal paths don't actually cross and then the guitar goes in here and it goes through the guitar signal chain and through the helix and then through the looper and then the looper goes in here and the point of doing that is this lets me mix um, drums and instrumental loops after they're recorded so if, you know if something comes in real hot I can just reach down and, and change it and then the, the other thing it does is there's a MIDI cable that goes from the 500 to the 600 and keeps them in time so if I do so let me start over. And then this uh, this thing takes you through different, you know, patches. So I have it set up to auto things. So I'll go. So then this thing's now sent. The 500 is now sending MIDI clock to both the uh, 600, to both the 600 and to the um, stomp. So my uh, delays are always in time. And then the point of doing that is if I if I then come in and record anything at all onto one of these channels. Um, it does two things. One, I'll, I'll actually show you. So I go ahead and record it and stop it. Uh, it doesn't matter what I do now. When I play this one, it'll play from the beginning. And then when I stop this, if I start this again, it'll play again. So you can see that it's the, uh, the channel two is playing. So the, the the sort of important thing to remember about that is if you have a uh, you know a song where you need percussion to come back in without that rhythm part then you gotta record a blank. And now when I do this, so it's it's made so that whatever your leftmost channel is, that's the one that plays automatically. So if I start the drums right now, it's channel one that starts, not channel two. And then this gives me a couple other options too, which I really like. I can run the two percussion loops separately. So if I go like that. You have to be pretty good on time with this. But then I can go back and forth between two drum parts. And the other, if you set it up in, in multiples, I can layer drum parts and take parts in and out. The other thing, there's one other thing you can do. I do this and I can go. I gotta, wait a minute, I gotta record it. <laughs> Sorry. And then you can, whoops, I did that wrong. So this one's playing now. I know what I'll do, I'll do. And then I can take it back off. So what I did there was I undid it. So now this is playing without it, but then I, but then I can, whoops, then I can add it. Well, I accidentally overdubbed it and erased it. So you, you can put a, an undo redo, which it really kind of gives you four channels of percussion. Uh, the one downside to this is you can't use your drum, your guitar for percussion like a lot of people do initially, but you can go, so I'll clear the channel and then I can go. And now with that tempo in, I can now use my 600 channels if I want to for, um, I could beat on my guitar and put them in here. They'll just need to be in time with this percussion. That gives you a lot of options. And it's a, it, that, those workarounds fix most of the problems that I had with the 600.